Uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, today I'm talking about uh, two things. Uh, first is serverless WordPress, and second thing is uh, next interface of WordPress. Yeah. Today I'm talking. Uh, first is uh, what is serverless, and uh, the example for example of the serverless on WordPress. And next thing, uh, talking the next interface. I think next interface is a uh, voice. So I introduce. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking about the next uh, voice interface on WordPress. And uh, finally, I in introduced the example uh, using the WordPress with Amazon Alexa. And my name is Hidetaka Okamoto, and uh, come from Japan. And uh, I was lead organizer of WordCamp Kyoto in this year. And uh, our team named the Digital Cube working for WordPress on AWS. And uh, there are two hosting services named Sift and Amimoto. Okay, let's begin. Yeah. First, do you know the word serverless? Do you know? Okay, yeah. There are no definition in dictionary. Yeah, this is very new word. And serverless is uh, one of the design pattern of infrastructure. And concept uh, that encourage uh, currently learning productions. And here is got not five cycles and in this year and serverless path is here. So serverless is a very new word and very new innovations. And the Amazon team says the serverless is no servers to manage and scale. And what is the, what is me? Talking the examples. For example, currently web servers like Amazon EC2 or many many VM cloud. Uh, we have to manage uh, three things. First is application, and second is uh, middleware, like uh, Nginx or Apache or many things. And we have to manage the OS, like uh, Linux or Ubuntu and many things. We have to manage uh, many things. But in serverless, like, um, uh, like AWS Lambda, we, on, we have to manage only your applications. And Amazon Web Service says uh, this. Say this uh, you only focus on your applications. And you, you never worry about the provisioning and configuration and managing servers. So serverless is a very, very good for web developers. And how about WordPress? What are the, what, <laughs> what are the benefit of serverless for WordPress? In WordPress, we have to worry about following things. First is, how do I know website? my website is secure? And uh, is my server running the latest software? And uh, can my website and server is easy to scale by traffic or not? And how quickly, huh? how quickly could I recover from the server's, um, server's crash? But I think server helps us resolve the these problems. And uh, our team using the serverless for WordPress, this is uh, named Sifter. Sifter is a WordPress hosting service using the serverless architectures. And this is life cycle of uh, Shifters. Uh, site, mani uh, site managers can access the WordPress used, uh, to edit your website. But uh, your website visitors cannot access to WordPress. Uh, shifters generate your WordPress site at static HTML file, and user only said generated static HTML. So users, uh, your, your uh, visitor of your website, user seems uh, looks like your website at static. And this is the two point. First is a hosting at static HTML. And published web servers only hosted the uh, static file, like HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, or image, and like this. And uh, cached by global CDN using the AWS Cloud Front. And so, uh, because, because, um, hosted only static HTML file and published website, there's no PHP and no MySQL. So we don't care about the PHP and MySQL issues. And 
the published website but hasn't uh, stay, hasn't used that state. So very the web server is very easy to scale and recover. And the second point is uh, WordPress admin is on demand. Um, for default, your WordPress server it powers down. There's no WordPress. But if you want to edit your website, the shift out WordPress easy to easy to power up anytime if you want. And editing your WordPress after finishing. Hmm? After editing your website, you can power down WordPress and generate it HTML. So uh, after it editing WordPress, mm, you generate the HTML and publish web, send published web servers. After that, you can stop your web servers. So if you never edit your content, website's content, you, the WordPress, con WordPress is never, never running. We don't care about the next update because the WordPress is not running. So, serverless is a concept of website or infrastructure architectures. And there are no servers and manager and scale. And serverless WordPress is, I think, very scalable and very more, much more scale, secure. Okay, next thing. Next interface of WordPress. I think next interface is voice because do you know this device named Amazon Echo? Do you know? Already buy? You have Echo? You Google? Ah, okay. <laughs> Google Home. Um, I, I like to. Yes. yes, Amazon Echo is running the Amazon Alexa. This is a voice service powered by Amazon Echoes and. Amazon Alexa enable us to um, to interact the with the device using the voice and uh, building your new experience for voice use voice design and we can easy to create your voice applications. This is user's flows. First, user talking something to Alexa. The Alexa convert your Alexa capture your voice and. Alexa convert uh, your voice as text and call some web APIs. And your APIs return some text or JSON. Alexa read, uh, convert your text to voice audio and speech out. So Alexa's cap Alexa help us to convert voice to text and text to voice. And we only create uh, AWS Lambda or uh, create web, some web API. So if you're creating uh, some voice application in using the Amazon Alexa, we only create uh, some APIs. Never mind converting voice, never mind com uh, capturing audio. These things Alexa help in. And you can easy to help, uh, easy to try Alexa skill by browser. You have to access echosim.io. This is a mo uh, browser emulator of Alexa. And how about WordPress? I think Amazon Alexa and WordPress is a very good relations. If you want to use your WordPress content to Alexa skill, it, most, uh, most good way is uh, using the flash briefing skill. This is a feed, read, uh, feed reader application for Alexa skill. And uh, Amazon says the flash briefing skill provide quick overview news or something headline or something podcast. And user can select your news in your Alexa applications. And flash briefing requires a this format, RSS or JSON feed, including the GUID, a title or a description or link and publish date. If you want to create some feed, we can, on, we can easy to use by WordPress. Because WordPress create this feed for default. So if you manage some if you manage some WordPress website, we just only provide your WordPress RSS feed to flash briefing skill, we can create voice application. You are very easy. And if you want to create some custom application, for example, lightening the, um, managing your smartphone 
or talking, discussing something, or quiz game, we can, ah, sorry, I missed number. Uh, this skill is an example of using the flash briefing skill using WordPress. First is the New York Times. And another, another site named Sixterman and Amimoto News is uh, my uh, flash briefing skill that I made. And I only, I developed only one or two hours to create this skill. If you have flash brief uh, WordPress RSS, and uh, if you have some AWS account, we can easy to create voice application in Amazon.com. And if you want to create custom, some custom application or writing some uh, managing smart home or custom conversation, we can use the Alexa SDK by Node.js. And the, the SDK has many examples. For example, uh, like uh, Hello, Hello World, uh, Feed Reader, uh, Quiz Game, uh, City Guide, and uh, High Road Game. And there's many, many examples in GitHub. So if you're interested to create not only flash briefing skill, skill, to create a custom Alexa skill, you can access, you have to access GitHub in github.com slash Alexa. And of course, we can use the use WordPress data using by uh, WP APIs. And run, this is examples, um, writing Node.js and calling WP APIs and uh, passing APIs response and create, um, running the Alexa response. And I create Alexa and WP APIs example too in, in Amazon.com. This is a custom fact skill, asking the, our web service, talking, uh, introduce our web service, or read, in, read, my, yeah, read our WordPress blog feed by WP APIs. And if you're interested to create WordPress the custom skill by using the WP APIs, we can access, in, we can see this code in GitHub. Please search GitHub space, shift We can access, we can see these examples. So, today I introduced the serverless is uh, your web servers create more scalable and secure. And build your, build your own voice application easy to create using the Alec Amazon Alexa. And power of your Alexa is an enable application with WordPress. And finally, combine, uh, combine WordPress and Alexa so for an entire new media. Yes, and that is my talk. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you very much, Ritaka. So we are open to the Q&A. Uh, I would like to have questions from the audience. Do we have any questions? Any questions from the audience? Yes, the gentleman over there. Can I have the mic over there, please? Just give it like a second yeah. to. Yeah. Um, with this, mm, now it's working. With the serverless, what happens with the dynamic content, like content f uh, contact forms and things like that, when you're just serving static HTML? For now, uh, Sixters cannot run in uh, dynamic content, like contact form seven and uh, searching everything and many things. And uh, our team introduced the uh, instead service like Discuss and uh, Mautic, uh, Mautic form, Google form, or Google custom search. Yes. So it has to be external providers. Yes, library. Yeah. We have to create, uh, we have to integrate uh, some JS applications because there are no PHP. Yes. All right, thank you, yeah. thank you. Uh, anybody else has any questions? Okay, yes, there's one more. Yeah, 
Um, for the Amazon Alexa voice app, um, how does it deal with the, I presume it's, it works with English and any other language, right? Uh, for now, uh, Alexa supports uh, two languages, uh, English and Germany. So how does it fare if, if I like, say for example, uh, I'm from the Philippines and then my English is not like, I have uh, a different accent. Yeah. Um, how does that, how, how does it deal with it? Probably, yeah, for now, Alexa support in the uh, four region, United States, uh, British, and Germany, and India. So, can I answer I this? I think, uh, if you, uh, yeah, I can answer this. Yeah. So, uh, I think last month, Alexa released a feature, okay, for voice differentiation. So, until now, uh, Alexa didn't have a feature of voice differentiation, which means that it takes the intent, which means what you're trying to say, but it doesn't differentiate between like you are saying or the other person is saying. Because this has serious security concerns. For example, Alexa, Amazon is using it as an interface to deal with their, let's say, uh, orders. Okay, So I can speak and make an order. But think about it. So somebody comes to your house and you enable your device to link to your account with the credit card and I can just speak and make an order. Okay, So uh, to avoid these kind of security concerns, they are coming up with voice differentiation, which means that mm -hmm. Alexa responds differently mm -hmm. based on who is talking. So they are bringing that feature, but still accent is a problem because uh, that is one of the challenge of any voice-based systems. Okay, uh, So just in case, I, I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, Line, which mm -hmm. is uh, a messaging uh, platform of oh, Japan, yes. yeah. they are coming up with smart speakers, mm -hmm. Okay, and they are building a platform similar to Alexa, and their USP is uh, it's the Alexa for Asian languages, which means they are trying to project it as the platform for Japanese, probably Chinese and some other Asian languages also. So right now Alexa is not so Asia focused, but I'm sure there will be some local solution to uh, target that market. Thank you for helping. Um, thank <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I, I really uh, would like some more questions for Hidetaka today. Yes. Well, I see your hand over there. Thank you for the great presentation. I think the serverless technology is really interesting. Yes. But I'm just thinking it sounds like not very practical because most of the website will be like dynamic things. Yeah. So is there like any mechanism that it can feed back any data it's catching in the HTML when our backend is online? It can parse back any data like visitor counter or something mm. or not at all? Uh, wait a minute, Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm not good for hearing English. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I'm going to repeat that. Uh, I'm just thinking that when it comes serverless, it's just generating a HTML site so we have a backend that is actually off. Yes. So is that possible? Some data we can catch it on the HTML site using JavaScript or something. And when the backend is on, can synchronize back, can feed back some data to the backend. In Sifter, for now, uh, we have to create uh, some other APIs uh, to manage to manage the dynamic content that was saving some of your data, but I want to <laughs> create it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just to add to his point, right? So serverless doesn't mean no server. Yeah. Okay, so Amazon doesn't position it that way. Yeah. AWS is position, positioning that way that you don't have to manage your server, but it doesn't mean there is no server. Okay, so there is a server sitting behind, but Amazon is taking care of scaling up, scaling down, uh, all the provisioning on the server side on their side. So you don't have to, let's say, provision your server, which means you can do dynamic stuff. Okay, So you can do uh, dynamic stuff by using a different programming languages, and it can still be served by your runtime server. Okay, So serverless doesn't mean no server. It is just that you don't manage your server. So serverless, is, that's the whole concept of serverless. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Both thank of you. you. <laughs> Right, thank you. Uh, 
Can we have more questions? We have a lot of time in hand until the next talk. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> if you don't mind, that is. Hmm? You don't mind having more questions, right? <coughs> yeah, <I'm not> okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, we have one more question. All right, awesome. So using Alexa, you know, as voice control, um, is it's kind of a novelty, right? So could you like maybe suggest some real world applications, something that uh, you think Alexa can work in the world right now, not uh, something to control a website, something to control something in the house, but right now, what can Alexa with a press do? What do you feel? Mm. <laughs> Difficult, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not it. <laughs> Uh, if you're interested, I like Amazon like SaaS. Uh, most, uh, most easy way to see many example. You have to go Amazon reinvent in next class uh, in December. Or in US, there are many skill, many application in Am hosted in Amazon.com. Uh, also over thousand application, smartphone uh, or Starbucks or Uber or Domino pizza or um, many things, and uh, Alexa, Alexa just convert your voice and call APIs. Because so uh, we can we can create various application uh, because we just making the own language and own servers. We just make APIs. Mm, okay. Uh, maybe if your question was more with respect to WordPress, one idea I can immediately think of is, okay, so let's say that I'm a podcaster as well as a blogger, okay? I don't have to do it twice, right? So I just record my podcast and so I can have a plugin which can convert my podcast into a post, okay? So it it's reduces work for me. This is one use case I can think of, uh, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Right. We have one more question from the other side. Yes. Um, hi, I'm quite new to the Alexa technology. Uh, but I, what I know is that, um, take for example, Google, for Google, right, they have a similar technology where they convert the voice into a transcript. And uh, I believe there's a charge that is involved. So every 15 second block, um, that it, it will attract a 0, 0.00 something cents. Um, is the same thing applying to, to Amazon? Uh, will they charge? So I beg your pardon. Yeah. So is the Alexa service to convert voice to uh, text? text yes, is yes. that a free service? Uh, Alexa is free. For now. Um, yeah, I can answer. So Alexa <laughs> doesn't cha yeah, charge yeah, based on the uh, word blocks. As far as I know, they charge based on the resource usage. For example, that if let's say 10 users are using Alexa to convert something at a time, you have a particular server usage. For example, yeah. if a site is growing and let's say there, is a, there are a million users, then you pay more. Okay? So assuming that you make revenue from the million users, so that's the business model of Alexa. So basically, the more users you have, you pay them more. But less users, they have a free tier where you don't have to pay. So that's their model. Their model is usage based. <laughs> all right, thank you for all your questions. Is there anyone else who wants to ask anything related to Alexa, maybe? All right, fine. Okay, thank you so much, Ireta for coming back to WordCampus G this year, too. Thank you so much. Thank you.